Welcome to day number four of the 21 day Tai Chi challenge. So in this session, we're gonna explore a movement called the rooster stands on one leg. But as always, you don't have to get it perfect. You don't have to memorize anything. Just follow along and just do what you see. I'll be your mirror image. You can always breathe normal and you can even do this sitting in a chair or you can alternate sitting and standing as needed. Now stick around for after the flow and I'm gonna show you the best things you can do to keep your knees healthy both in Tai Chi and in regular life. All right, so if you're standing, we'll begin with your feet together or as close as you can. The hands can come to the lower abdomen. You can close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze. As you breathe in, the belly expands. As you breathe out, the belly returns towards the spine, abdominal breathing. Just taking a moment to feel into the body, letting go of the worries from the day. Coming into the present moment. Then you can take a deep breath in and then let it out with a sigh. <sighs> Just letting out tension and stress. Hands can float down by the sides. As you breathe in, the arms float up. A circle in front as if you're gathering an energy. Bring it into the heart. Send it down through the body and into the earth. Sinking the chi, the life force energy. Breathing in and breathing out. Nice and easy, nice and slow. Feeling all the sensations that you can. One more time, sink the chi. Then from here, you can step one foot out to the side, either foot, the arms float up in front. The arms get heavy, floating down, the knees and hips soften. Breathing in like mist rising from the lake. Breathing out, floating down, nice and soft. Opening the door, the start of the journey. One more time, breathing in, breathing out. This time the arms circle in front, making two loose fists. The forearms come towards each other, then rounding the back. Then reverse direction, the arms come out to the sides as you open the shoulders and chest. Then breathe out as you round the back. Breathe in as you open, or take as many breaths as you need. We call this one spinal cord breathing. Helps to circulate the energy along the spine, loosening up the joints. It's like a good morning stretch. All right, let's do one more. And then open. This time, the arms float out to the sides. The hands float down, the palms face up. The hands float up to the heart. One hand pushes up, the other pushes down. Connecting above and below. The hands come back towards the heart, switching sides, keeping the spine neutral at first. And then if you want, you can do a side bend, easing in. One more time to the other side. This time the bottom hand comes up and then push to the corner. The other hand pushes in the opposite direction. Coming back to center, we'll go to the other corner. The dragon spreads its wings. This time you can turn to the side if you want, letting the back heel come up. And then one more time to the other side. This time the backhand swings around as if it's gliding on the surface of the water. Then the other hand comes around. The dragon swings its tail. Feeling the dragon energy today. Let's do that again. It's like you're making little ripples. Little waves sending them out into the distance. One more time. And then hug the tree. Bring it back to center, rounding out Soften. The arms open as you breathe in. As you breathe out, the fingertips shift towards each other. The hands float down. Just begin to drift over to one side. The hands float up and then drift over to the other. Nice gentle sway. Tall grass in the breeze. All right, now this time the hands float up and this hand here is going to scoop down and come right out in front the elbow bent. The hands float down, we'll do that again. Same side, just the arms. The hand comes right up to about eye level, right out in front, and then floats down. This time you can unweight the same side leg, lifting the knee, touching down as needed, the elbow right over the thigh. Call this one the rooster, stands on one leg. You can keep your foot down or you can lift it even higher if you want. Just meeting yourself where you're at. 
and always go forward from there. One more time on the side, the rooster. This time the hands float over to the other side, the hands drift up, and then this hand here scoops down and comes right out in front. The elbow bends, the hands float down. Let's do that again, same side, just the arms. All right, now this time if you want, you can unweight the same side leg, lifting the knee or touching down in front. Still counts. Let's do that one again. One more time, the rooster stands on one leg. And then circle the arms around, hug the big tree, rounding out, softening the arms open. This time the hands float down, the fingertips point towards the sky, the backs of the hands face each other as the hands come up the midline, and then spiral the hands out and away. So coming down, hands come up as you breathe in, Breathe out, we call this silk reeling. The energy loves the spiraling motion. It helps to circulate the energy and the blood flow throughout the whole body. One more time. Breathing in. Ah, breathing out. This time the palms face up, one hand right on top of the other. The bottom hand drops down. Well, it's all the way up and over, down the center line of the body. Then the other hand floats up as you breathe in, as you breathe out, centering. Let's do that one again, creating mental focus and clarity. One more time, centering. This time, both hands float all the way up and over, just as much as you can. The hands float down as you soften the hips and knees. The hands circle in front as if you're gathering an energy to transform into loving kindness and self-compassion right at the heart. Last time, all the way up and over, down to the waist. This time, you can make a diamond shape with the hands right in front of the heart and press up. We call this opening the heart, sending out all your loving kindness out to the world. May all beings be free from suffering. May they be happy. May they be healthy. May they live with ease. And then turning your palms to face yourself, the hands come to the heart. May I be kind to myself. May I feel connected with all beings. May I love myself just as I am. Hands can float down to the lower abdomen. You can step your feet together or as close as you can. You can close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze, letting your body rock and sway ever so gently. Just letting the energy move you. You might notice the rocking back and forth motion or side to side or even circular motions but not trying to control it in any way. You can notice your breath. Feeling the breath. And then you can bring your attention into your heart, expressing gratitude to yourself for being here today to cultivate flexibility, balance, and strength of body and mind and compassion in the heart. And if your eyes were closed, you can slowly open them. The hands can come together in front of the heart. We can finish with a bow. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Tai Chi Flow. So stick around if you can. I'm gonna show you the best things to do to protect your knees during Tai Chi and in life in general. Right, and also, I might even, I'm gonna throw in an exercise as well that'll help strengthen your legs, that'll keep you feeling safe, and can also help reduce pain for many, many people. All right, and so what we'll do is first, I wanted just to point out a few things about knee alignment. 
All right, and so when it comes to knee alignment, you wanna usually make sure your knee is tracking in the same direction as your toes. So for example, when we're in our bow step, all right, remember our Tai Chi lunge? The front foot is facing forward, so you want the knee to face forward too. So when we rock back and forth, a lot of times when we're doing our Tai Chi flow, we, we repeat the movements so we can really learn the movements in our body to get out of our head, reducing stress coming into the present moment. All right, so as we're doing that, we wanna make sure that our knee is tracking over the toe and not caving in. Okay, so some people, they might cave in a little bit and that's really bad for the ligaments of the knee. Right, like the ACL and some other ligaments, that one's the most common. And so to protect your ligaments and to keep your knee stable, you wanna keep your knee right over the front toe. All right? And then also the back one as well. So you want the back one to track over the toe too. You don't want that to cave in either. All right? So you can, peek your, you can peek down as you're moving during the flow just to make sure. And then over time, it'll just become natural. It'll just become automatic to where you start to move with more efficiency and more safety and really just in a way that's gonna really create strength, flexibility and balance in reducing your risk of injury. All right, the other thing is when you're doing your lunge, you don't wanna go past your toes, okay? So you don't wanna go too far this way. All right, so sometimes if you take too short of a step, it's easy to do that. So just be careful if you do take a short step, which is okay. So if we step in and then if we step out, you can do a short step, but just make sure you're not leaning too much because then you're putting extra stress on the knees. All right, and then so same thing if we do some squatting motions. So one of the best exercises you can do to keep your legs strong is the mini squat. All right, so the key to the mini squat is the hip hinge. All right, so first spread your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I'm gonna show you from the side because the key is the hip hinge. So you wanna hinge from the hips. All right, see how my knees didn't move forward too much? Maybe a little bit's okay, but you don't want your knees to come down when you're squatting. That once again puts too much stress on the knees. Instead, sit back and that loads up the muscles of the hips. So we wanna engage the muscles instead of stressing the joints. All right, you can hold your arms up too and you don't have to go down very low. You can just do a, that's why I call it the mini squat because it's really training the right movement. Call it a movement pattern. So we're training the pattern, so that way whenever you go to squat, you start off in the most optimal way. And then once you, you know, if you have to pick something off the floor, you can come forward. But if you start off doing that, that's where people can really start to injure themselves. And it's also not great for the back, because if you come forward and then you start to round your back, that puts extra stress on your lower back too. So instead, sit back, See how my back's still neutral? And then you can actually be in a really good position to pick something up. All right, so that'll help you in everyday life as well as in your Tai Chi practice. All right, so I hope that really helped. So make sure when you're ready to go to the next video in the 21 Day Tai Chi Challenge, just click on the link right here and I'll see you over there.